good morning to you. A child has drowned at Highlight Reservoir. Coming up, how the Sheriff's Office said it happened. Well, if you checked your mailbox lately and you live in the city of Bozeman, you may have gotten one of these. It's a notice saying that your rate in your water is about to go up. Good morning and welcome to your Friday. I'm Missy O'Malley with Chet Lehman. Matt Elwell has our beautiful weekend forecast and mm -hmm. work week for next week forecast as well, all in just a few moments. Our story for you now, there is new information on a drowning that took place at Highlight Reservoir. According to the Gallup County Sheriff's Office, the victim was a five-year-old boy who was visiting with his family from out of state. The boy's body had been underwater for a short period of time before family members were able to locate him. Efforts to resuscitate him were unsuccessful and he was pronounced dead at Bozeman Health Deaconess Hospital. And Gallatin County search and rescue crews were called out on Wednesday evening to the Great One area above Ferry Lake Trailhead. A 23-year-old woman on a date had fallen about 800 feet. The couple was trying to ski that area. Search and rescue crews were called out at about 930 along with a medical helicopter. Shortly after midnight, crews located that woman. They had to lower her down a steep cliff before they could get her to that helicopter. Officials say the woman was wearing a helmet at the time and that helped prevent her from her injuries being a lot worse. Some fire updates from around the state. Now the horse flyer or horse fly fire near Lincoln has seen little growth over the past 24 hours. That fire sparked on Monday near Flesher Pass. Since Wednesday, it's only grown about 30 acres as crews continue to work the lines around that fire. It has burned an estimated 1,335 acres. People living in the Flesher acres are still evacuated at this time. There is a public information meeting for the Horsefly Fire happening tonight at 7 o'clock. It's a beautiful area. I it's camp out in that there. area uh, mm. almost every year. It's Absolutely fantastic. gorgeous up there. Yeah. Uh, looks like we're still dealing with a lot of smoke from a lot of these fires, but uh, mm -hmm. more importantly, our air quality is holding in western Montana. That's good news for us, for sure. at least for now. I do expect our air quality to deteriorate. It looks like uh, smoke and fire tracker, the most of that smoke is well off to our north. Southwest Montana dealing with temperatures into the 50s and 60s. A pleasant morning. There may be a few drips and drops on your windshield shield on the way out to work this morning, but uh, really not much to worry about. The afternoon brings a decent chance of thunder showers. They will be scattered across the area. Those storms continue in through the evening, but our temperatures a little cooler, not only today, but through the weekend. We're going to break down your complete forecast from the Billion Auto Weather patio in just a few minutes. Thank you for that, Matt. Coming up on 633 here on your Friday morning. Here's an interesting story. Police are investigating after human remains were discovered near Ramini. Yeah, a U.S. Forest Service ranger discovered a human skull in the Minnehaha area around 1015 in the morning. Lewis and Clark County Search and Rescue performed a grid search in the area. They found more human bones, some tissue samples. The remains are now headed to the Missoula Crime Lab for analysis. They're examining them, but they need to be examined by the anthropology division, probably from the University of Montana, before we really get a good idea of age, gender, uh, uh, anything like that. Now, if you have any information about those remains, contact the Lewis and Clark County Sheriff's Office. And if you live in Bozeman, get ready to pay a little bit more for the water that you're using. Uh, maybe. MTN's Cody Boyer explains why. Water use in July and August for single family homes can jump up to five times what it is um, in the winter months. We all use it every day in the shower, to drink, water your garden, and it's something your pets need too. But we have to pay for it. A reminder shown in bills and notices like this one. Everyone received notice that we're having this hearing. And this is where we're setting the rates where the commission adopts the rates. Kristen Donald, financial director for the city of Bozeman, says depending on how much water you use, you could see an eight cent uptick on your bill. This is for a drought reserve. So in times of drought, the city's building reserve to make up for the lack of water use that will occur. Now, city officials say that August is the month that we historically use the most water, and that also includes the city government. So to combat that, not just the water rates are going up, but across the board, while residents don't have to worry about this as much, sewer rates are going up. 
For multifamily homes, the city proposes a 2% increase in water rates. Others like commercial usage and Montana State University will see a small percentage increase too. City government will see a sewer rate hike of 20%, something single families won't see at all. A residential is not seeing any change in their sewer rates. To make it all easier, water conservation specialist Jessica Alstrom says there will be a new tool to help keep track of how much H2O you use, a free water use portal called Drop Counter. It displays water use in the tiers that your water use falls into. So the city of Bozeman's rate structure um, was just revised and now has four water rate tiers. From one to four, the new quad of tiers measures how much water you use from least excessive to most. So if you use water less, your bill will actually will go down. The public will get one more chance to hear all about the proposed new rates soon at a final public hearing in Bozeman. Cody Boyer, MTN News. Cody tells us that final public hearing will be at 6 o'clock on August 19th in the City Commission room at City Hall. And here's an interesting one for you. American and Alaskan Airlines will be adding additional flights this winter at Bozeman Yellowstone International Airport. American will be increasing Chicago service to daily flights. Alaska will be adding a fourth flight to Seattle. Concourse expansion, expansion project will be adding four new gates, which will allow for more flights during those peak periods. But that may not work out the best for passengers or the airlines. Uh, we could add five more flights at this time and not have a challenge. Uh, but it's not the time when people want to fly, uh, or at least when the airlines are able to connect with their destinations. Now it's ultimately up to the airlines to add more flights in and out of Bozeman. And it all started with a family trip to Bozeman, and it ended with that family getting and their pets getting stranded. Turns out guinea pigs aren't allowed on some flights. Ivan Rodriguez picks up the story. Several miles from Denver International Airport, the Riley family is hunkered down inside this hotel. What was supposed to be a relaxing flight back home to St. Louis became a headache. We were flying home from Bozeman. We had the layover in Denver, and Denver's when they refused to let us board because of the guinea pigs. That's right, four guinea pigs. This is Lily, and then that's Camo. And that's Betty and Speed. Michelle and her daughters say they drove to Montana with their guinea pigs to be with their dad while he worked. To go home, they booked a flight with United. We bought airline approved carriers. I looked through, you know, as much of the policies as I could, you know, find. And I didn't find anything that said no guinea pig. With nobody telling them otherwise, they flew to Denver. That's where Michelle says the problem started. They said that we could not fly with them, so we either had to have somebody come and get them and fly by ourselves, or we could drive home. In their policy, United says they allow cats, dogs, rabbits, and household birds. United tells us they're reaching out to staff in Bozeman to find out why the Rileys were allowed to board with their guinea pigs in the first place. They've also provided the family with travel credits, meals, and a hotel. If we would have been refused in Bozeman, I would have understood. Um, I would have had a place to go. Michelle says she's now waiting for her husband to drive from Montana and pick up the guinea pigs. They say they all plan on making the long drive back home. Ivan Rodriguez. Wow. In other news this morning, an official U.S. Senate hearing on Montana's national parks was held yesterday in a barn. Senator Steve Daines, who chairs the Senate Subcommittee on National Parks, held the hearing at the Grant Corps Ranch in Deer Lodge to get feedback from those in the state's tourism industry. The hearing focused on bringing more attention to Montana's small, smaller park units like the one in Deer Lodge. To see if we can drive more visitation to these parks because it helps our communities. The tourism dollars are essential. A community like Deer Lodge could use a shot in the arm. This is a way to highlight the uh, economic opportunity we have here. Now, aside from Yellowstone and Glacier National Parks, Montana has 10 other small national parks that include recreational areas, monuments, and historic sites as well. 639 staying on that same theme, we've all been fascinated by the amazing wildlife in our national parks. But some visitors have decided to get up and close and a little too personal with those not so gentle giants. This choice recently led a young girl getting thrown in the air by an angered Yellowstone bison. 
For the people who want to pursue these risks, the National Park Service has released a chart to help you. Take a look. The handy chart shows all the locations where it is acceptable to pet oh wildlife. Oh my goodness. And as you can see, that place is nowhere. <laughs> Park <laughs> officials continue to stress the importance of never getting near wildlife to keep you and the animals safe. Wow. Like, I think it's if you wanna, awesome. If you want a pet near his tail, ouch. Yep. Um, the very top it says, think again. The shoulder is vacation is over. The head is simply a nope. Yep. The back would be a think again. Yeah. And near his mouth it says, how fast are you? Exactly. Wow. Stop it. Don't pet the, don't pet the bison. Don't pet the bison. Chet, don't pet the bison. Don't pet the bison. Don't pet the bison. Okay, we do have to take a quick break. Happy Friday to you. Stay with us.